The blend shader has lots of different attributes that we can play with. Down a little bit further, if I scroll down, I'll see a section that says specular shading. And this has to do with the highlights. So shiny objects have highlights. Usually the more shiny an object is, the more focused and intense the highlight will be. So these attributes down here control the specular shading. So if I increase the eccentricity or decrease the eccentricity, this is essentially the intensity. And the roll off is the focus or sharpness of the highlight. And then we also have color, which is the brightness. So I can adjust all three of these to get different looks. I'm trying to produce a plastic material here. So a fairly low eccentricity and a high roll off and specular color pretty much gives me the look that I want. I'm also going to choose to turn reflectivity down to zero at this point because reflectivity is only necessary if I want to produce a mirror reflection. If I was trying to make a chrome ball, I would have a high reflectivity. But for plastic, I want it to be zero. Okay, so I've adjusted some basic shader attributes. Let's now add a pattern or image into the color channel so that instead of being a flat color, we can have many colors or we could place an image there or whatever we wish. To do this, I'm going to go over to the right hand side of the attribute editor and I'm looking for these little checker buttons. These will allow me to create a new render node which will control the color. All right, this will be, in this case, we're going to make a ramp. So I'm going to click on the button and I get a new window popping up that says create render node. Within that are a bunch of tabs and you will see the textures tab is currently highlighted. And we have two types of textures, 2D and 3D. So today we're going to be working with the 2D textures. 2D textures can be internally generated by Maya or they can be image files. So for this one we're going to do a ramp which is a generated texture or sometimes called a procedural texture or procedural map. And again it's, it's created by Maya in our scene. When I click ramp, my attribute editor now shows me the ramp parameters or the ramp settings. Now this is now feeding into the color channel of my shader, but I won't see it in my viewport unless I turn on hardware texturing for the view. Now remember if you press the 4 key in a viewport you'll see wireframes, 5 will show you shading, and now 6 displays hardware texturing. So if you want to see the texture in the viewport you'll hit the 6 key. Okay, in the ramp attributes, we can adjust the positions of these flags to change the color placement on the object. I can scroll down a little bit and I can click on the color swatch and change it to a different color, for example. Click on a different color swatch and change that to another color. I can delete swatches by clicking on the little X. And I can create swatches by simply clicking anywhere in the center of this ramp display. That'll create a new flag. Okay, so right now I'm getting interpolation between these colors, or it's blending between colors. But in fact, I, I want to create sharp boundaries. So I'm going to go up here to interpolation and choose none. And as I move these flags around, you'll see I'm getting a sharp boundary between the colors instead of uh, the blending. So I could go in and choose different colors for these. Blue, maybe I could go create another swatch or flag here and make that one green. And I can also change their positions more precisely if I want to, you know, get a beach ball where all of the um, lines are sort of lined up correctly. I can go into each one of these and, and actually type in a value. This one's already at 0.25 so that's good. Let's make this one 0.5, halfway. The next one will be 0 0.75, 0 0.75. There you go, I've got a nice beach ball with a little bit of a highlight on it. Now we're ready to create a material for the ground plane. I want to get the appearance of a weathered pier. 
I've already taken some photographs and created these maps. This is a diffuse map for the color of the pier. And then I've also got something called a bump map that indicates roughness. Anywhere we see black here will be a valley, and anywhere we see white will be a hill. So I've got those two map files, and I have to place them into my current project source images. This is a critical step, and you cannot make a mistake here, because if your files are not in current project source images, then Maya will not be able to find them. So remember, we created a project. I've got one here called Maya Ball Project. And inside that is a subfolder called Source Images. You'll need to place all of your texture maps into the Source Images folder before you build your material shader. We want to put our images into Source Images here. So I'm selecting them both, and I'm copying, and I'm going over into Source Images and pasting my files in there. Now that they're in that location, I can go back to Maya and create the shader. So we'll go back to Maya now, and I'm going to select my ground plane, and once again, right click, assign new material. And this time, because it's a weathered pier that doesn't have any varnish on it or any highlights, I can use a simpler material shader called Lambert. And this one is similar to Blinn, except that it has no highlights at all. So now I've got a new Lambert shader applied to the ground, and if I adjust the color, we can see that it's affecting the color of the ground plane. So I'm ready to make a new render node, once again in the color swatch, but actually before I do, let's give this a proper name. I'll call this Ground Planks Lambert. And remember to press Enter. Then I can go and create my render node for the color channel. Click the button, and this time instead of picking checker or ocean or grid, we're going to click File. So File is special. These are all procedural or you know, algorithmically generated images or patterns that are created by Maya. If we want an image from the real world, we'll use a file map. So I'll click File, and then Maya adds the file node, and it shows us the file attributes. So we've got the file node's attributes here. Next, we need to browse to find the file. So in the file attributes, you'll see a little browse button. Image name, and then a folder. So I'll click that folder, and look where it takes me, directly to my current project source images. If I'm not sure, I can always go to current project, and then enter source images. And there are my two files. Okay, so it's very important that I have already placed the files in this folder before I get to this point. It's critical that you do not attempt to link to a file that's sitting some other place on your hard drive. It must be within the current project's source images. So this is the diffuse color channel we're dealing with. So I'm going to click the one that's labeled diffuse and then click open. And immediately you will see that I've got planks on my ground plane. Pretty cool, huh? I can go to my camera view and I can press 6 in the camera view so I can also see the texture in the camera viewport. 